In this tutorial we're going to learn to work with the slide view in Articulate Quizmaker 360. So in the previous tutorial we built this basic quiz question so that was our first quiz question and it's okay. I mean you've got a title, you have your question and kind of a decorative image but it's probably not the nicest looking quiz question. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to slide view and we're actually going to make this quiz question uh, look a little bit more engaging. So this is kind of the default so we're going to hit a correct answer here. I'm going to hit submit and you can see I get my default feedback box. And we want to create something that's a little bit more like this. Um, we're going into slide view to do that. So you can see the layout's different. I can select an answer. When I hit submit, I get a custom feedback box and then I can continue. So let's go ahead and close that and let's create our quiz question. Now a couple of options. One is you can right click and duplicate the question and then you already have the content in there and then work from there or you can just start with a new question. I'm going to create a new question and I'm going to choose the multiple choice. Now that gives me my form and then I have my slide view. So I'm going to go ahead and put all my content in the form. And then remember we put our feedback by choice. And now we want to select our correct answer. And uh, you can see we have our kind of standard look again. And as you can see we inherited the previous background that we chose but that's okay. So now I've got my content. I'm going to go to slide view. Now slide view gives me this free form environment. So we want something that looks a little bit more like this, right? So we're going to have our image here. We're going to have our title up here and we're going to have this block. So let's go ahead and change things up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to insert the image. So let's go into insert and we're going to choose picture. I'm going to choose the expense report and that gets inserted in and this is actually fine. So we're going to just drop this down to the bottom. So I've already got my title up here so that works well. I don't like this background so what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to format the background. And what we want to do is we want to make the background a solid color and we're just going to do a color pick from the pen here. I like to do that. It's like color pick from the, from the objects on the screen. We'll just do a color pick here and we hit OK. Uh, we've got our font here. I'm going to make this a little bigger for the title. That's our question here. I can nudge that up a little. So now I've got this and then I want to have a block for my question. Now this is where the timeline comes in handy. So I've got my timeline. I've got my picture that's on top. So that's my stacking order. So everything on underneath that is not visible. So I can I can drag this down or I can right click and I can send to back. So now I've got everything sent to back. Now I'm going to hide this so I can't see it. And now I've got my, my question box here. I'm going to choose the form. I'm going to resize it a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect for the tutorial. We'll just do that. And then I'm going to move it down over here. I can show my picture and I've got my uh, box here you can see. Now I can't see it well because it's white text. That's okay. We're going to fill it with a color. So let's do this again. Let's do a color pick. Just choose something from the image. I'm going to choose one of these grays here. And so we've got this gray box. So now I've got my choices here. And uh, if we look at the uh, quiz, let's preview this. Pretty nice looking quiz, right? I mean it's, it's a lot better than that standard one that we have. It's still you know, mostly the same content but it looks a little nicer. And we'll make a decision here. We'll hit Submit and I get this default feedback box. So we're going to change that feedback and actually put it up on top. So let's go ahead and close that. Uh, the feedback is right here in the feedback layers. And you can see each one remember has custom feedback. Uh, and I want to change these boxes. So we're actually going to change it at the master slide level. So what I want to do is I want to have another little box here that shows up with the button. Uh, one thing I can do to align that is I'm going to go to View and you have these guides. And so I can take the guides here and I'm just going to click and drag the guide. So I know where the top of this box is. Oops, let me clicking. Drag this here and I know where the side of the box is. So this way when I put the other box in there I'll know where it's going to be. Now um, one of the things we do is we're going to go into the slide master here and we're going to go to feedback master 
and then we can modify that. But before we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and create my box. So I want to create it the way it looks so I can see it here on the slide. So I'll just insert a shape. And let's just do this here. Um, this will be fine, right? We can let's just do this and we'll make sure it's lined up here. I like these grid lines. I'm going to take this and uh, let's go ahead and do a color pick again. Let's do a slightly lighter color pick, right, for the feedback and um, for the shape. We're just going to use um, or for the outline, we're going to use this color. So there's a little bit of a tie in. So we've got our feedback box. I'm going to do Control X, which brings it onto the clipboard. And so now it's there. Now let's go to View, and we're going to go to Feedback Master. And then you can see I have all these different uh, feedback options. So you can see I already changed the feedback for the practice file, but we created a new slide, so the feedback's going to be right here. So when you look at that, you have this kind of default shape, and then you have a correct feedback, an incorrect feedback, and then you have your try again feedback. The only thing we really need to do is change these two. So I'm going to show you how to change one, and then you can, and then I'll change the other ones, uh, and you won't see it in the tutorial, uh, but you can do that on your own. So remember, we have our grid guides here, right? So that kind of shows us where our question is. I'm going to hit Control V and paste that square uh, that we created. And now all I need to do is I'm going to get rid of this shape, right? And you can see how that shape's being inherited here. And I'm going to take this shape, this text box, and this text box. Uh, first thing I can do is actually let's send this to the back. So send this to the back here. There's a line. I don't want that. I don't really want that line in there, but let's see if we can select it. And we'll delete that line. Let's go ahead and grab the text box. We're just going to drag that over here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect for the tutorial. We're happy with this. Let's go ahead and grab the button. And let's say the button's here. And we'll be fine with that. You'll see how it kind of moved all the default stuff. Now I have to come to each layer and change the content that's unique uh, to that layer. So in this case, the correct and incorrect feedback. So we'll just do that real quick. Again, doesn't have to be perfect for the tutorial. Let's move this over here. But as you can see, it's kind of just like working on a slide, right? So we have our layout. So now we can see we have our correct and incorrect feedback, and then we have the buttons that go with that. Now, if you want to, you can take this box here, and this button might look a little bit too too uh, heavy for you. So I'll just take the box. I'm going to go to Format Painter and apply that to the box, and you can see now that um, everything shows up uh, and looks a little flatter. So let's go ahead and close the Feedback Master. Now we're looking at the slide, and you'll notice that I have my feedback layers. But when I click on the feedback layer, you can see it's still using the default, and I just have to apply the new feedback. Now one of the things, and because I'm playing around with the practice files, it's going to be a little bit different, but you'll notice that when I have a Feedback Master, I've got clean graph paper shine graph paper. So one of the things that you'll need to keep in mind, and let's actually go to View, uh, Feedback Master. Whenever you create different slides and feedback, uh, you're going to have a title for that. So in this case, you can see the master slide says graph paper, and then the one I just modified, I believe, also says graph paper. So you can rename that. So let's go ahead and rename that master, and let's just call this custom. And um, we'll hit Rename. And now when I close this, you can see right now it's using graph paper. But I'm going to apply Custom, which is the one we just renamed. And you can see how it lines up really nice. And then we'll do the same thing here. And we'll do the same thing on this one. So now you can see I've got my feedback. So let's preview this. Now we can see we have a customized slide, right? So we changed what was kind of a bulky form view slide into something that's a little bit more accustomed to our needs. So we have our questions down here. I'm just going to go ahead and make a selection. I hit Submit, and then I have a custom feedback box, and I hit Continue uh, to continue. So that's working with slide view. Let's go ahead and close the preview. Now, A couple other things I want to point out about slide views. You've got your timeline, so there are a lot of things you can do on the timeline. 
You also have uh, transitions and animations. And let's look at the animations specifically. So I'm going to come over here. I've got my content. And let's say I want the content to animate in. So when this comes up here, I want this gray box here to animate in uh, with, with the qu question choices. So let's go ahead and move those. So let's, um, let's move those to the one second mark. And I'm going to expand the choices. And let's say I want each one to come in a little bit later than the other one. And um, we're going to go ahead and on this we're going to add a fade transmission or a fade animation. So we're going to go to animations and it's going to be an entrance animation at the one second mark. So we're going to go to fade. And what should happen is these should fade in sequ uh, sequentially. So let's go ahead and preview this. All right, so you can see that they animated in. The reason they animated in this weird order is because we have the answer shuffled. So in that case, if you want them to animate in a sequential order, you want to turn off the shuffling. So let's go ahead and change a couple things here. So we're going to come back to the animations here. We're going to go to um, shuffle and we're going to say turn off the shuffling. So now we know it's going to be VP, human resources, and account payable. It's going to come in in order. And let's go ahead and do a fly in animation. So we're going to do entrance animation. We're going to do fly in and we'll say fly in from the right. So let's preview this now. And so they should come in the right sequence and then they should fly in as well. And there you go. And again, you can customize that if you want to. And then one last thing is we'll do the same thing on the um, layers here. So you can come in on the slide layers, on the feedback layers, and you can select these objects and you can do the same thing. So you can have the objects animate in. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select these objects and we're going to have those animate in. We're going to have them fade in. So uh, we'll just do it on the accounts payable one. So let's preview this. So they faded in. Now I'm going to click on Accounts Payable. When I hit Submit, these should fade in really nice. So that's basically it. Slide View really opens up what you can do with your slides. So you can add your content and then you can make them look and behave any way you want to. And then uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the community. And then watch the other tutorials to learn more about working with QuizMaker.